my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. We make a mistake when we practice. We think we can direct everything, but the conscious mind simply cannot go into the real details of picking, playing courts, rhythm, whatever it is that we practice, there's a limit to how much you can be directed as to what to do, how to hold your hand, how to hold your pick. There's a level where you need to practice in the right way, in the most effective way. And effective means that you allow your brain to learn. You don't know what happens because that's out of your powers. It's out of your capacities. You simply cannot analyze your way to perfect technique. We try, but we overanalyze and we don't allow our brain to, to go to work because we're just interrupted all the time. And alternate picking is a very good example because that is one of the techniques that demands the, the most of you. Uh, you could say. So the more effectively you practice and the more effectively you think about practicing alternate picking, the easier it is. But the fact is that most people think very ineffectively about practicing and so did I. So what do I mean here? Let's, let's, let's take an example, right? Uh, uh, that, for instance, I, am, I have this video on YouTube where I'm talking about holding a pick and how you should hold it. And I say to let it point in the direction of your index finger and then place your thumb on it right there and you have a pretty good picking position. From there, from that position, I adjust it just a little bit. See my, when I, it actually, it, from there, when I start picking, the pick does a little bit like that and I, my finger goes a little bit to the side. And there was a guy who commented and say, because I talked about Paul Gilbert and Ali Mueller, how they hold their pick and how I model these guys. And he said, you don't hold the pick like Paul Gilbert. And, you know, if you go really into it and really look at it, you can say, no, I don't hold it exactly like him, but I don't hold it like that. Some people do. I don't hold it between my middle finger and my thumb. Some people do. So in general, on a, you know, broader basis, I hold it like Paul Gilbert. Right? But then my brain adjusted the pick to fit the needs of being able to play effectively. How did it do that? How did it have the ability to adjust the picking position, the picking depth, everything without my conscious guidance? Because what I say is I hold my PC bone right where the low E string meets the bridge because that makes sense on a general basis, having the same reference point to the strings. And then when I start picking, I do it with about the same picking depth every time because that makes sense on a broader basis, on an overall basis. You don't want to have a, a varying depth of picking because that, that you know, requires you to really force your pick the way through. You can't have, a, have an even picking motion if your picking depth varies all the time because you can you know, double the amount of resistance you get on one pink, pick stroke to another just by varying the depth by a tenth of a millimeter. So picking depth is everything when it comes to that flowing thing. And so I have these overall things that I recommend that you do. But from there, your brain needs to be able to adjust and figure out how to do it. And that's a part of the brain that you're not conscious of. Your brain has a capacity to do that. And the only way to give it space to learn is to practice at a tempo where you can get everything right, where you are relaxed out of stress because stress is fear, is you know, tense emotions. Those emotions belong to the war, to the catastrophe section of life. And you can't learn when you're threatened. And you're threatened if you feel stress. It's like, I mm, uh, uh, have to learn it. You won't learn it because those parts of the brain that can, you know, figure out how to get those minute details just right so you can do it. Those won't be activated if you are stressed, if you're trying too hard. So the conscious mind of trying too hard, of analyzing down to the, the least bit of, okay, should, you know, and it should angle it just a little bit to get faster results. It makes all kinds of stupid shortcuts that it has to unlearn in the long run. 
right? When we're using our conscious mind too much, just overall guidance, you know, and then we start practicing and then you don't practice too fast because the second you push the limit, you walk into stress and you walk into survival mode in the body. And then those parts of the brain that needs to be in a peaceful mode to really feel and analyze how are we doing? Okay, we try stuff out all the time and that happens unconsciously. You're not part of that, so stop messing with it. Stop being all in there all the time. I might hold the picket slanting just a little bit with the... The slanting is going to happen if that's what those parts of the brain wants you to do, right? <laughs> so, so, so you really need to practice with no stress and then to take those overall, uh, you know, what, do, what seems to work for most people and what doesn't look weird, right? If you look at somebody who, who picks in a, in, a, in a really weird way or like a tense way using their whole arm, you know, you use your arm for hitting and lifting things, not for, you know, then to just stay out of that. They might be successful doing that, but you want what, what works for most people and what looks the most elegant and the most effective, right? Of course. So you model that. Where is he holding his hand? How is he holding his pick, right? And then you, you, you take those things and then you just let your the deeper parts of the brain work. And the way to make them work is to practice without stress. You Build to the level where you can feel, oh, oh, and now I have to make an effort, a really a hard conscious effort to make it happen. And then you pull back and then put in all the repetitions, right? It, re it, it really isn't that hard, but our conscious mind makes it hard because mm, I want to get there, right? So I hope this makes sense to you. It's important. Watch this video over and over again until you can overpower that part of the brain that just wants to push, push, push and wants to figure it out like it was a secret that we could figure out and then suddenly, bam, you know, with no practice, we can just do it. It doesn't happen like that, of course. We know that. Um, uh, and I should say before I go that just download our free Sweet Peaking course just out there right now uh, and go check out the, uh, the sale we have at this moment on our website, Huge Savings. And then I'll see you in the next free video tomorrow. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.